my Mayday family. How are you guys doing today? So today I decided that I'm on my way like out. Actually, I've been out. I'm on my way back. Um, and I wanted to take you guys along for the ride because I really don't feel like I'm making this ride by myself. So I think so much, right? Like, have you guys ever thought to yourself or have you ever experienced um, feeling like you t you think too much and like every little thing you think about so I'm one of those type of people that over analyzes every little thing guys so if you are like that if you are the type of person that can't stop your mind from running about anything you, your mind just runs constantly right you're just always thinking and over analyzing that's another thing I go in debt it's like the struggle is real when it comes to like my over analyzing if you're one of those people just know that you are not alone I do it too I have a lot of clients that do it I have a lot of friends that do it you're not the only one that does that you're not the only one that does that it's not like it's not weird or anything like that uh, everyone does it at, at some or several points in their life everyone does it but there is a particular exercise that I want you to try if you are someone that has a tendency to overthink things and overanalyze things I do want you to try this and I know what you're thinking oh here goes the counselor again you know but try this and I think that it will be very helpful for you so when you find yourself overthinking or overanalyzing things I want you to take a seat close your eyes and sit down straight and start taking deep breaths right so release take three or four deep breaths and then what I want you to do is I want you to think about what is the happiest place that you would love to be right now is it the library is it um, your mom's house I don't know what is your happy place that you are where somewhere where you feel happy even if it's somewhere that's made up right like Disneyland in heaven you know what does that look like to you and I want you to start picturing that what that looks like and from picturing that I want you to start picturing yourself there and I want you to start picturing what are the things and some of the things that you would do if you were there right would you start like are there, are there slides so would you start playing on the slides are there is there food so would you like eat all these awesome foods I want you to start thinking about that and thinking about what are some of the things that you would do um, if you were there and imagining it while sitting straight and taking deep breaths so you're still taking deep breaths um, but you're more instead of being focused on your on the breaths that you're taking you're more focus, focused on that place and I want you to really really focus on that place and really really imagine it and submerge yourself in it right and as you're imagining it this wonderful colorful place that's your happy place and the things that you would do whether it's eat or um, play or be carefree and rich buying things or shopping whatever it is I want you to stay in that place for at least two to three minutes and imagine all the things that you would do while breathing right while still having your breathing regulated and once you do that I want you to take two three two or three deep breaths again and open your eyes and just like release all of that tension and all of those thoughts so guys that's one of the exercises that I do with my um, clients it's one of the uh, 
not all counselors use this I like to use it quite a bit and it's effective because we don't just do this one time we do this and I tell my clients to do this every time that they have an episode or every time that they find themselves and their mind running out of control to take their mind out of that place that's out of control and chaotic into a place that is more controlled, happier, and like their happiest place. So here's the trick about it. Your mind is your mind and you control your mind. You know that, right? You are in control of your own mind. No one else is in control of your mind. That's your mind. You are the only one that can control it. And when you find yourself and your mind you find yourself losing feeling like you're losing control of your mind because it's running and going crazy like I said you need an outlet so things like working out hobbies if you paint things like painting um, you know things like that will help you in releasing that tension outwardly as opposed to keeping it inwards but also Learning how to control your mind is essential, at least to me. Uh, this might not be so for all counselors. Now, but learning how to control your mind and regain control of your mind is top priority. It's one of the top priorities. And once you do that, once you learn how to gain control of your mind and control your mind, you will become unstoppable. Yes, I, I said it. I said that. You will become unstoppable. Because the reason is we often feel, feel like we lose control of our thoughts. We can't control it. We just keep thinking and thinking and thinking. So by doing this exercise, we're slowly learning to take control of our minds. Right? Every time we stop, take deep breaths, and picture ourselves going to a happier place in a different place, that's training ourselves and training our minds to, um, to, to do something different and training ourselves in order to be able to take control of our minds and take our mind to a different place when things like that start happening. So that's an exercise that I like to do with clients. And like I said, it's not just do it one time and the, voila, that's it. You do it every time, every morning if you can. Do, do that exercise every morning for about 10 minutes and you'll be amazed at how much more control throughout the day you have over your thoughts every time something starts creeping up, up on you or you find yourself you start getting anxious right because because you're training yourself and training your mind on a daily basis you'll be better able to control that you'll be better, better able to spot it when it starts happening and to take your mind to a different place for a little bit and then when you come back you can choose what you want to focus on or think about you don't have to stay in that place in that chaotic place mentally you don't have to stay there and this happens to everyone not just you don't feel alone you're not alone I'm telling you it happens to me that's the way that I'm wired as well it's just a matter of learning your mind and learning how to control it because I guarantee you you can control your mind but no one else can, only you. And so, when your mind is doing that and going crazy and running crazy and feeling crazy, you're the one that needs to take, take that, take control of that and reel it back in. One of the things that I do when I find myself in a situation where I'm thinking too much is I literally stop everything and I start writing. I write everything down, every little thing that I'm thinking about, I just start writing. And what I found is as soon as I start writing, it's almost like it's hard for me to keep up with my thoughts. Like I just, I go crazy with the writing. I just like, I can't stop writing and I just keep going and, and I write everything down till I can't write anymore or I don't have anything else to write. And this always, without fail, makes me 
feel so much better. It's almost like unloading my, my thoughts and instead of holding on to all of that myself, giving it to the paper and like allowing the paper to hold it for me. I know that sounds crazy, but it really, that's really the way it feels. It feels like you're literally giving those thoughts to someone else and they are holding it for you. So now you feel a lot more lightweight and you feel a lot better and you don't have to like hold it yourself. So like, that's just what it feels like. That's the, the best way that I can describe it. So if you're someone that like me has a tendency to think and over on over analyze things, try writing it down if you haven't, right? Like try writing all of those thoughts down. You have so much in your head that is struggling to be released in some way, shape or fashion. And if it can't be released, then you have you get all type of adverse effects from that because you're essentially carrying all that load by yourself. So it's trying to get out, but it doesn't know how to get out. And so it's like trapped. It's like a prisoner trapped in your head. Can you imagine? So it doesn't have anywhere to go within those four walls. And so it just keeps running around in those four walls. So can you imagine that? That's insanity. That's insane. That's a lot of pressure. That's just a lot. So with that being said, writing it down is just a perfect, great outlet for that. Right? So the next thing that I do in order to help mitigate my tendency to overthink and overanalyze things is I work out. I, tr I work out a minimum of three times a week. Usually I'll do a little bit more, at least four to five, but the minimum is three. So regardless of what I have going on that week, that is the minimum for me is three times a week. By the time I get done working, working out, I'm a lot more focused and I'm a lot more clear minded. You know, and it's a form of exertion, right? So you're exerting and all that energy and you're releasing all those toxins from your body through the workout. So those things that are trapped in your mind and trapped in your body, that tension, that stress, it needs a way out again. It doesn't have a way out if you're just sitting there thinking and thinking and thinking. It doesn't have a way out so it just stays in you and you and it gets heavier and heavier and heavier because it has nowhere to go. So if you find ways of letting that energy out and letting those thoughts outside of yourself so it's not trapped, then you feel a lot lighter. Then you feel like you can do a lot more. You can be a lot more productive because you're not holding on to so much, you know? So that's another outlet for me. When I work out, I release all those toxins and all that pent up energy that can that that can actually come from having all those thoughts. I release it through my workout, like through the energy that I put in, put into my workout. And once I release it, I feel that much lighter and that much better, especially when it comes to being able to think and process my thoughts without it being too much or feeling too much. You guys, I can't do anything without Google. Who's with me, right? Like, I can't get down the street without Google. Like, I, like, I don't know. There's places that I've been to 10 times or more. Literally, I kid you not. And I still pull up this freaking map to like help me get there every time. It's just like a habit. I could, I probably, I don't know how I would live without it. And I don't really, honestly, I will say this. I don't know how like people before our time, and I guess this is what they mean by millennials, but I don't know how people before our time actually did live without Google Maps. Like, how do you do that? Is that even possible? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't live without it. But enough of that. Meditation. Um, I meditate quite a bit, you guys, and uh, I 
do that in the mornings before my day gets started. The key when it comes to meditation is your breathing. So you do that for a couple of minutes, about 15, 20 minutes, and you do nothing but focus on your breathing. And if you do that, you will, I promise you, immediately start to see results in that you'll have better days, you'll have more productive days, you'll feel better all around. And uh, you'll just feel so much better all around. So meditation is another really good way that I use in order to keep that under wraps and under control. Um, uh, I will say that that's another good way. Well guys, thank you so much for taking a trip with me. Uh, today, I am actually at my destination the gas station <laughs> and I'm about to get some gas and put some gas into my car because I'm out of gas so just think about that 